I am looking at buying a self-storage facility. This will be my first one. What will the SBA look at to qualify me? How do I know how much I can qualify for? My FICO is about 700. I've worked in IT for the past eight years and have about $200,000 to invest. Thanks in advance. All right, great question. So on self-storage, we can utilize the SBA 7A or the SBA 504. And depending on the, the deal itself, we'll determine, should we use S, uh, the 7A or the 504? So if you're going out uh, and buying an existing S, uh, self storage facility, you're gonna need at least 10% equity injection. That means if you bought a million dollar property, you're gonna need a hundred grand. Um, now the reason why you'd use a 7A on a self storage is because you can you can work in um, working capital in the loan. You can finance the, the financing costs, the SBA guaranteed cost, Mm -hmm. um, and operating capital to, for uh, employee compensation, whereas the 504 just will, will finance the actual facility and none of the working capital. So we first look at that and um, you have 200,000 to invest. You need some reserves, so you can't use all that if you don't have any additional reserves. So, so typically, um, we're gonna first look at the, the business itself does it cash flow? Does it does it make sense from a financial uh, position? Are you? And then we're going to look at you as the individual, your borrowing capacity. You can also be gifted on these type of transactions, so you can have a family member gift you part of the down payment. So it's really a, a depends kind of question because you might be able to bring in um, uh, uh, an investor partner that owns less than twenty percent. You might be able to get some gift equity for down payment, and you can also potentially get the seller to finance on a seller carry uh, and if they put at least five percent um, on standby then you then you only need to bring in five percent equity injection so there's a lot of variables um, and depending on your capability to borrow from uh, or to get down payment or uh, gifts from your family and friends we can structure it in many different ways is the point um, so to answer your question you're going to need 10 percent equity injection you might be able to get 5% on standby from the seller. You need at least 5%. You're going to need a couple months of reserves. You're going to need to show good borrowing capacity, but but that will kind of kind of dictate your starting point. If you're not going to borrow money, if the seller's not going to carry anything, then you know you're going to need at least 10% down and that's going to be determined. So you would essentially on paper, you could do, you can finance $2 million, right? And let's just say you had a few months of reserves somewhere else, then Potentially, you can buy a $2 million self storage, but there's ways to stretch and manipulate the numbers. Hi, this is Bo Eckstein, host of the Investor Financing Podcast. Are you a real estate investor with properties and you're trying to figure out how to refinance or grow your existing real estate business? Need some clarity and a game plan for moving forward? I'm offering a free strategy call where we dive deep on your real estate investing goals. I'll help you come up with a strategic finance plan that will help you get to where you want to go. Whether you've got a portfolio of 30 properties or you're starting out with your first property, I have a framework that has helped many investors grow. If you're interested, book a call below in the Calendly link. There's not a one size fits all guys for, 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 for financing. So we're doing this Q and A. I'm just giving you some ideas of what to look at. But really when it comes down to it, it's going to depend on the business and your overall borrowing capacity. This is just an idea. And then once you get an actual self storage facility that you, you're looking at, you're gonna get rent rolls, you're gonna get the financials on the business. Then we're gonna deep dive in and then we're gonna talk about ways you can structure to acquire this property. And maybe your goal is, hey, I wanna put the least amount of equity down as possible. Then we're gonna say, hey, what about this? What about this? And you know, there's other people that are in a different boat where they have, they're sitting on a bunch of cash where putting down 10 or 20% is easy. So sometimes SBA might not be the best option for that particular person. So we're gonna talk about this first and we're gonna look, does it make sense to go SBA or maybe conventional? Does it make sense to just do a bridge loan and refinance at SBA? A lot of variables, hope that helps and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. And don't forget, if you have questions, go to investorfinancingpodcast.com forward slash ask.